All right, everyone, so we're going to start our work now to start using WordPress. As my syllabus says, uh, today, some of the big topics of today are, well, we need to set up our virtual server environment. Uh, on page two, I've got listed here that we're going to download and set up WAMP server. Now, the software is ready for us to use on these computers. You're not going to need to download anything, really. The software is ready already here. At home, you will need to download and set up the software. Which software? Let's take a look at handout number one. Remember, they're named number one, number two, etc. Campus eCommerce One, set up WAMP server. This is just informational. We will not need to do this, really. It's already set up. So if you open number one, if you look at number one, I've got a link to wampserver.com. Again, if you're at home, you could do everything that we're talking about here at home as well. You'll just need the software, and the software is free. If you're on Windows, you'll need WAMP server. If you're on a Mac, you'll need something called MAMP server. The W is for Windows and the M is for Mac. That's why there's Mac instructions and Windows instructions. Most of the time I'll be focusing on the Windows instructions because we've all got Windows computers here. The Mac instructions are also in the folder. So basically this is saying at home you would go to the site, download the software, install it with all of the defaults, and what that does is installs the software called WAMP server. That creates a virtual server. On that virtual server on your computer, then we'll install WordPress, and then we'll have a fully functional WordPress site completely for free. WordPress is different than other web design software like Dreamweaver or FrontPage, etc., in that you need to install it on a server. You don't install it on your computer and use it, you install it on a server. A server like GoDaddy, Bluehost, HostMonster, etc. We're using a virtual server, WAMP server. So all of the instructions for setting up WAMP server are listed here, and then at the very end here, number three, it says, well, let's confirm that it worked. We will be able to do this in just a moment. And then there's also a section on troubleshooting. Sometimes this stuff doesn't happen as smoothly when you try it. I've taught this class several times over the years, and I make it look so easy, but then you try it at home and it doesn't work exactly. Here's some possible troubleshooting tips. If you have a laptop and you're trying to do this at home, bring your laptop, and at the end of the day, maybe I'll look at it and see if we can find the problem. So, if you notice, on do you see on your desktop a purple W? That's the WAMP server software. Like I said, it's already installed. When you see that W on your desktop, WAMP server, double click it. You will not get a pop up that says, Welcome to WAMP server. You won't get any feedback, really. The only thing that will really happen is, and you might miss it, but in the corner, a little W might appear. A little red W, perhaps, or a little green W, or maybe it went away. Mine went away. It's hidden inside of that double arrow. So if you don't see any results from double-clicking WAMP server, check inside of the double arrow. Mine looks weird. It's a little uh, shiny arrow, but yours is a double arrow pointing up. Click on that, and hopefully there, then do you see the WAMP icon? If you don't see it anywhere there, make sure you double-click the WAMP server icon on the desktop first. How many of you see a little green W? Okay, good. Anyone see a red W? Okay, if you see a red one, just wait a little bit more. Sometimes it takes a moment to load up. Anyone see an orange W? So what this is, is we've loaded the the WAMP server software, and I see that it's green. 
Question? All right, so if you do see the green W, I'll help you in a moment if it doesn't quite work. If you, if you wait a moment, it'll become green eventually, hopefully. So if you see the green W, go ahead then and click it. You get this menu. And at the very top, you have an option that says localhost. Go ahead and click localhost. That should load up your web browser. It loaded up my web browser, but mine opened a couple of tabs. Do you see a tab at the top WAMP server homepage? Mm -hmm. So if you see WAMP server homepage, click on it. And then it'll, this is basically the WAMP server welcome screen. So we know at this point that WAMP server is working. Number one step. Does anyone not see this? Anyone need a little help? All right, so remember, if, you're, if your neighbor needs a little help, happy to help them. But remember that uh, just a little quiet so that we, uh, we can all hear the main lecture. So if you see this screen, this is showing we've got our WAMP server running, our virtual server. This is as if we had bought an account at Bluehost or GoDaddy or uh, what other ones, one and one hostcom etc. This is a virtual server. We can then install WordPress here. Notice it says at the bottom, your projects. No projects, no websites. The server is ready for us to set up WordPress. So every time we come into this room, I'll remind you of course, but every time we come into the room, you're going to need to launch WAMP server and load localhost. Again, everything that I'm talking about is, is on these sheets, but I've launched WAMP server and then I click the icon and I launched localhost. That's what I'm seeing in the web browser. You would do the same thing at home. You would have to take the steps to install WAMP server which are not complicated, you just go default, default settings, next, 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 and then eventually you get WAMP server at home. The reason we have to do it every time we come in is because these computers, because it's a public school with many classes, as soon as you turn off our computers, they reset to factory settings. So that's good and bad. It's bad because everything that you've done then gets erased and you have to do it again. But it's good because if we get a virus on a computer, we just restart it and the virus goes away. Uh, it's bad because if you save your project on the desktop and you did not save it to your USB, you lost it when you turned off the computer. But again, the big pro is that we can use these computers for many people and uh, the factory settings will kick in as soon as we turn on and off the computer. So we've got WAMP server running. That's basically my sheet number one. Run WAMP server. We did number three. We confirmed that it's working. Notice we can also, if, we, if you don't click on the icon down there, you can always go back directly to this address. Just make a note here. And notice at the top also, my address is localhost. So I can go, I can always go back to http colon slash slash localhost. Notice it's not www.localhost.com. That would mean a website out on the real internet. This is not the real internet. This is a, like a virtual internet, a virtual server just on this computer. So it's local to your computer, localhost. And sometimes you can also access it by typing in this address, http colon slash slash 127.0.0.1. This is just for your information. 
So everyone has the, the, the WAMP server homepage here. Let's look at sheet number two. When you buy an account at GoDaddy, you're buying a server, which is the, the hard drive where you're installing WordPress. And you're also buying the domain name, victor.com. We have now the virtual server, WAMP server. And now we need to install the software, WordPress. So here, in this handout, I talk about going to wordpress.org, downloading the file, and then installing it on our computer. We've already downloaded the WordPress software for you because to have 40 people download the software at once would slow down the whole network. We've already got it installed on these computers. I'll show you where. So we don't need to do 1A or B or C. We need to start with 1D. So if you, if you go to the the desktop, open up computer, open the computer window on the desktop, and this time we'll go to local disk C, C as in cat, not Z, C, local disk C, double click local, local disk C, And down at the bottom, you'll see a folder called WordPress. If you open that folder, this is all of the pieces of WordPress. But we need to copy this to our virtual server, WAMP. Notice we've got a WAMP folder here. So once you find your WordPress folder, you want to right click it. So on the mouse, right click, copy. Then you want to open WAMP folder, double click the WAMP folder, it's all alphabetical. So open WAMP. And then you'll see a folder called www. Open that folder, www. And what we see here is the WAMP server starting page. That page that we, that we see over here, this, it's basically these files here. So on an empty spot here in the, in the window, right click, paste. That's going to copy the basic WordPress software from that other folder into our www folder inside the WAMP server folder. And what I'm talking about is in sheet number two, right here. We have a folder called WAMP. We want to open the www folder inside of the WAMP folder. We want to move or copy the WordPress folder into the www folder. That's what we just did. So now if you go back to your web browser and uh, reload or refresh, reload your, your local host screen, now you should see, under Projects, WordPress. Let's stop at this point. If you don't see that WordPress folder, raise your hand. Call me over. So remember everything that we're doing are machines.
That's as far as we go. Anyone else? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then inside of the building, we also move that WordPress folder into the building. Now we might take a web browser to the local host. <laughs> so this is as far as we got. We see WordPress. Right? All right, so this, um, this, as I said, it's a few steps. We're going to need to often do these steps every time we come in. There's going to be some shortcuts. But because these computers have this protection, it's called deep freeze, when you turn them off, you'll have to do this again to some degree. Um, we're not going to need to recreate your site every time, but we will need to do a couple of things over sometimes. So at the very least, we're seeing the WordPress folder right there. Now WordPress works. It's a modern kind of web development software because it, it's a site, it's software that creates a site running on a database. The database holds everything that your, of what your site is. It holds all your products, it holds the text of your products, it holds the prices, it holds the colors of your site, it holds the users, everything. So the database holds everything that your site is. So what we need to do is connect your brand new out-of-the-box WordPress site with a, with a database. Following my instructions, that's the next part here. Number two, just to get practice with this because sometimes it's just easier to type the address, we'll do this. That's step 2a, go to the address, type the address, http colon slash slash localhost slash phpmyadmin. Notice there's no www, there's no dot com. Type it exactly like that. So type that address in your web browser. You're going to type the address, http colon slash slash localhost slash php my admin. I'm going to reuse the same window. That'll work. All right, so this scary looking screen here is where we are going to manage a database. We're going to create a database. Once we have that database, then we can connect WordPress with the database, and then we'll have WordPress ready to go. So this is uh, a necessary evil. This is something we need to do in this room because, again, in my perfect world, everyone would walk in here with a server already set up on GoDaddy, paying $80 a year to have that. We just log in and start using it. But we cannot do that because there's such a variety of people that come to these classes. So honestly, we're doing it the hard way. And it is going to be hard a couple of times. And then as we do it more times, it should make more sense. And remember, everything that I'm talking about is in, are in the handouts. So on my handout here, I've got... We're at the PHP My Admin screen. At the top nav bar, click on Databases. See the very top? Databases. So click on Databases. And also near the top, it says, let's create a database. So in this box, 
we can type we can create a database with any name but I'll just call it the same name as my project WordPress so we'll create a database called WordPress and then you'll click create if it worked you get a yellow pop-up that says database WordPress has been created and then also the screen shows you here we've got a database called WordPress and on the left side here we've got a database called WordPress so when you buy an account at Bluehost they take care of all of this we have to do this ourselves because we're using a, a free a free tool I've used several of them. I've used GoDaddy, Bluehost, Host Monster, HostGator. They're all they're all good. I'm gonna on another day I'll talk more in detail about what I recommend and so forth. But um, you don't need to buy one of these just yet if you don't have it, because I will spend a day talking about that. So that was step two. Step three. Now we need to hook them up. We need to install WordPress to use that database. So notice here. Now we'll go back to the, we'll type the address localhost slash WordPress. So let's do that. Go back to your web browser and then up on the address type http colon slash slash localhost slash WordPress. So if at this point you don't get the screen about choosing a language, that could be a variety of issues, which I'll help you with in a moment. But this is working because we've got a WordPress folder inside the www folder, which is our whole WAMP server, our local host. So we've got the WordPress software uh, in the folder WordPress, and because it's <coughs> It's, it's brand new, it asks us to install it. We have a variety of languages we can choose from, but most likely you want to select English, and then continue. Now we're on number three. These are all the steps we need to do now. It's saying here, welcome to WordPress. Before getting started, you need some information on the database. You will need to know the following. Database name. Check. We just created a database. What did we call it? WordPress. WordPress. We need a username and password. Those two things are on my handout. We'll look at that in a moment. And then we need the host of the database. What's the host? Local host. And a table prefix. Don't worry about that. So we have all that information. Click Let's Go. All right, it asks for the name of the database. We created a database called WordPress, so that's, that's right there. We could have created a database called Kitty Cat. That would work just fine. And therefore, we would need to say, we would type here the name of the database, Kitty Cat. But since we created a database called WordPress, that's fine. Username is not username. According to my handout, Change the username to root, lowercase, no quotation marks. So the username here, this is not you choosing a username to log into your, your WordPress. This is the built-in username to access the database. On a different screen, we're going to look at setting up the login information for WordPress itself. We're just right now installing WordPress. 
in a little bit then we will create a login to our WordPress um, home page. <coughs> What's the password? Well, my handout says remove the password, leave the box blank. So there's no password. Remove it completely. Don't put, do not put a, a space. A space won't, won't work. It has to be empty. No password. Database host is localhost. And table prefix, we'll just leave it as is. WP underscore. So let's click Submit. It should say if this worked, all right, Sparky, you've made it through, etc. If you have a problem here, I'll help you in just a moment. But here this is saying we found your database, your password works, run the install. Then we get to welcome. This is where we're going to actually create the, the, the name of the site, the login for the user account, and a, and a password and such. This is the section continuing on number three. A site title, pick your own password, add your email, and click install. So here, you can write whatever you want for site title. We're creating a website. You can, uh, if you already have a website, you can use that name. That's fine. You can make up a name. We can change this later. Not a problem. I'm going to make up a site, Victor's Bakery. On my handout, I have a recommendation for a username. I'm going to call it admin. You can call it, you know, Victor, whatever you want. But I'm going to follow my handout and write admin. On your password, I'm just going to recommend, this is obviously the worst password, but I'm going to use the password password, just because it's in my handout. You can write your own password if you want. I will write it with a capital letter, however. Password. Very weak. Password. So obviously, if this were a real site on the internet, I would not be using such a weak password. But just for the purposes of this class, I'll use that password. And then write your email, not my email, your email. We've got an option. Allow search engines to index this site. Meaning, do you want Google to find your site? Do you want Bing to watch to find your site? Do you want Yahoo to find your site? Well, it's not really even going to be on the internet. They're not going to find it. But I'm going to turn this off because it's not a, a real site on the internet yet. Later on, when we're finished working on our site and we want to put it for real on the internet, we're going to turn this back on. We'll get to that later. So if you chose a different username, I hope you wrote it down. If you chose a different password, write it down. I'm not going to know any of this. If then you try to log in and you don't remember the password you just created one minute ago, you're going to need to do this again, because I don't know your password. Click Install WordPress. If it worked, you will get success and a login button. Click login. We're coming up close to our break. If you fell back at a certain point, we're getting close to a break. If it worked this far, you want to log in with the username and password we just set up. 
And if that worked, you will get the WordPress dashboard. Now we'll take a break. It's 7.50. We'll take a 10-minute break until 8. If you fell behind here or there, call me over. But if this worked, great. We've got WordPress set up.